Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. So one of the reasons that I created this channel was because it was painfully hard to add an AAD authentication to web applications. There were no good tutorials and many of them were outdated. And last year, I was able to cover many of the topics on, on how to add AAD authentication to many different types of web applications. And as soon as I was finished, Microsoft changed how it's done. So here we are again showing you how to do it for Blazor WebAssembly in .NET 5. So first we have to create the AAD applications. We need two applications, one for the server side and one for the client side. So let's get started with server side. So this name will be seen by customers if you make it multi-tenant or anything. So just choose something that explains your application. And so like, I don't know, test app server side. And then in here, it gives you the option to make it a multi-tenant or single tenant. This is basically if people outside your organization are going to use it, then you have to make it multi-tenant. If only your organization is going to use it, choose single tenant. And you can change this in the future. So if you're just starting with your tenant, it's fine. Just do single tenant. This video covers single tenant. I have another video that does multi-tenant. So make sure to check that out. It's up here in the card and down in the description. Then that's it. You just have to do register. In here, we would have to grab the app ID and uh, tenant ID that we're going to use it in the future. But I know you guys, you won't do your homework, so we'll come back and grab it later. So let's just go to API permissions. And here we have the Microsoft Graph. We are not going to use it on, on, on this side of the application, so we can remove it just to keep it clean. And then we have to expose an API. So this is going to be used by our client application to, to access these applications. So we're just going to do add scope. And then here you're just going to do scope name. I'm just doing API.access. You can name it or whatever. Like this is just going to be whatever the scope is, user access or something. And in here, the name you want the admin to see and API. So we're just going to put it API access gives you access to the app and you could do the same for users in this case we're just since only we are going to approve it we just did an admin but if you want the users to see this error uh, this message you can also add it for for users and that covers the server app so now we are going to go back here and we're going to create our client application so we're going to call it test application client to match our server it doesn't really matter uh, if you chose single tenant, the other one, choose single tenant here, if not multi tenant, and so on. And in here, we're going to choose single page application and we're going to use this URL. So it's basically for development purposes, it's going to be your local host, the port you're using, and then slash authentication slash login callback. Whenever this goes to production, you'll have to change this to your actual URL and then slash authentication slash login callback. So we're going to go ahead and register that. And then in here, we're just gonna go to authentication, make sure that everything looks right. And then we're gonna go to API permissions and we're gonna add a permission from our API. So in here you can see I have the test app server and the API access one. And we're gonna do add permission. It, it is not granted by default, so each user would have to approve. But since I am logged in as the tenant administrator, I can just add admin consent for everybody in the tenant. So it's granted for everybody. The users won't have to consent to be using this application. All right, and that covers the Azure side of things. Now we're gonna move to Visual Studio. And in here, I'm just gonna show real quick how you can create it. Then you can see in the time um, timestamps below, you can skip if, if you already have an application that you already created and you want to add authentication i'm going to go through the code in github so just skip to that if you if you already have an application if you're starting from scratch this makes it way easier so so here we're just going to create a new project and we're going to choose blazor web assembly you're going to name it whatever you want and in here you're just going to choose microsoft identity platform and you want it to be hosted you're going to click host it and you're going to click create i already created that so now I'm going to go through what basically changes in the code. So if you already have an application, this is what you have to do. So you have to add these two references to your package. And then in here, it adds a little bit of stuff. And the reason I'm going through it in GitHub instead of just going and writing the code is because I honestly don't go and write the code each time. I go to one of my 
repos that I have already done this and I just copy and paste whatever I need. So this GitHub is in the description. So if you want it, you can just go check the commits and I did the commits in order. So you could see how it looks without authentication. Then the next is with authentication, then it's adding the custom parameters for it to actually work. So in here, they added the, cas the cascading authentication state and this is in the app.razor. And then in here they add whether or not you're authorized and if you're not authorized, it will redirect you to login, which is a new component that they add. The authentication in this one is the one that kind of manages the whole authentication. I have a video that covers how to handle error because they don't handle it properly. So I'll kind of link that right now in the card and link down below if you, if you want to check that out. And then here, what they do is they change the fetch data razor to have auth authentication. So in here you can see they added these two directives. If you're going to be using it in all your pages, you should just add it to your import.razor. And then if you want the whole page to be authorized, so basically you can't access it unless you're logged in, you add this authorized attribute. And then here you can see that they changed the, the HTTP get from just being a regular one to have a try and catch. And the catch is if there is no token available, it'll redirect you to where the exception sends you, which is to the authentication page. And then in the client program, they add the base authentication. This will this is actually the thing that will add the token to your request. It only adds the token to request to your uh, website. If you are trying to contact Graph or anything, you have to add your own authentication handler. And for that, I'm gonna I have another video that I cover that, so I'm gonna link it in the card right now. And in here, it adds the default scope. Uh, and here you can see it's just a placeholder. We're gonna change that to our application afterwards. This is the login display .razor. This one you just have to add it, just copy and paste it. And then in the main layout, they add the login display at the top. So that's gonna show on the top right, like the button to log in, or if the user is logged in, it'll show the name of the user. And this is just another redirect to login, just copy and add it to your shared folder. And here they add to the importance of the authorization one. And here they add the app settings. This is the one that we're gonna have to modify afterwards. I'll, I'll go through what, what do you have to change. They add the MSL JavaScript to the index.html. Server side, they add these package references to make sure, so make sure you add them. And here they modify the weather forecast controller to have authorization into that API that you have to be logged in. And they actually add also that you have to have a specific scope. That's like the API that access that we created. And here they have it access as user. I am actually going to change it and I'll show you how to change it to the API that access that we created. And then in the startup, they add the authentication that if you add, so this is basically the secret sauce to, to add authentication to your web application. And they have like the add Microsoft identity. This expects a specific app settings JSON that it's here, that it has Azure AD and it has certain stuff that you need. And then in the configure, they add the use authentication, use authorization. So that's all the code you have to change. As I said, it's fairly simple. It's mostly copying and pasting. That's why I show in, in GitHub and that's why I did a commit special. So you can see basically what it, it, it added and you can just go and do it for your own project. Hopefully you're st starting from scratch and they'll just do all this for you. And then you will just have to do the next part, which is modifying your project to work with it. So once you have all the code, then you just have to modify a few files. So we're going to start the server app settings.config. So this is where it'll get all the information for the startup, the, the code from the startup that we just saw. By default, it uses the instance that it's login.microsoftonline.com. If you're in the government cloud or something, you might have to change that. Domain, this is your domain. And this one you can get from your default directory. You can see it here, primary domain. And that's where you get it in the Azure AD. Then tenant ID, it's also here. It's your tenant ID for Azure. Then you have client ID. So this is the server client ID. So to get that one, we're gonna go back to our applications and you're gonna click the server API and that's this one, the application ID. They have a nice little button that you can just copy. You're gonna paste it. And if you see when the code was created, you didn't add an, add an audience. 
um, that one I added afterwards because actually if you just run it, it won't work It'll, because by default it validates audience and we're not passing an audience. So it'll say this audience is not valid. And so in here, you just have to add your client ID again as the audience. And this, what ensures is that like if someone steals a token from one of your users from another application or something, you check that that, that the token they're using is actually for your application. So it, it kind of makes it a little bit more secure. That covers the app settings. As I said, this is this gets called by the startup in here. So like you see, it gets a section from Azure AD and here is the Azure AD section. So you have to have it like that. And then program CS. So that's in the client side. We have the program CS in here. You have to change. So it, it added the bind Azure AD again, which is from the app settings in the www root and it gets the information and you add the default scope for this one by default it adds the api uh whack whack and random stuff in here you have to change it to your app id that's the server app id the one that we copied slash the exposed api that you created so in this case we created slash api access so you can copy it from here so basically if you go to your server application, you do expose API, you copy this and remove the API slash, you remove that and you just leave the rest. And that's the scope that actually gets checked here. So if you can see, I changed it to be API access and only tokens with that scope will be added, uh, will be allowed. If you don't want that, you can remove this line and then remove this line and then you'll accept any tokens for that application. And then last but not least, we have to do the app settings on the client side. So in this one is in the www root and it's here just app settings and you have your Azure AD section and in here you have authority. That's going to be once again, login.microsoftonline.com slash your tenant ID. As you remember, you can get the tenant ID from your default directory. You can get it here or if you're in the applications and here we're going to use a client app because that's the one we're going to end up using. You can just select it here. If it's a multi-tenant application, you have to change that to common and then client ID. This is a client ID of your client application. So you have to get it from here on the client application. Okay. So after that, you should be good to run it. So we're going to go ahead and click run and we can see here that it added the login. So now we can do a click on, on the login. It logged us in and now it shows our name. If we go to fetch data, it will authenticate us and get the information. So that's how you add a de-authentication to your Blazor WebAssembly application. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.